Welcome to the Ed Newsstand Podcast. I'm your host, Troy Reynolds. This is Season 4, Episode 2 of the podcast. This episode is titled iOS 15 because it is all about the latest updates to your iPad and your iPhone. There are so many new updates and goodies to get to. Let's not waste any more time. Let's dive in. As you can see, there is a lot of information in this week's newsletter and it might be a little overwhelming for you, but if you kind of break it down and, and digest it in small pieces, it might not, not be too overwhelming. Uh, you can also pick and choose some of the things that you might be most interested in or some of the bigger updates um, that might catch your eye. As always, you can find my little foam finger and click on some of the links that are available in the newsletter. You can see right here at the top, iPad OS 15. And a lot of these updates are also very similar to your iPhone as well. So if you click on the title up at the top, it takes you to Apple's website and it looks at the all new features. If you want a little bit more of an immersive feel with the updates, you can click up here in the top right corner, the overview button, and this will give you a little bit more immersive view. And it, uh, this is where I got a lot of the screenshots for the new updates. So you can kind of scroll through here uh, and look at a lot of the new updates very vividly. The all new features tab uh, really breaks it down for you uh, and you can read deeper into some of the features that are available. If you click on the uh, little video link over here right next to the title, this will give you uh, a short little 50 second video of all of the little title cards that pop up when you upgrade to a new operating system uh, and a lot of the new features that are available. So let's take a look at some of the new features available in iPad OS. Uh, first is the multitasking. Now I've done videos on multitasking in the past. Um, and it was a little cumbersome. Now Apple has completely done away with the cumbersomeness of multitasking uh, and made it a lot easier. So there's a new menu, there's a new way for you to choose apps, better way for you to do split view and slide over the center window that I will show you. There's also a new shelf and an easy way to do an app switcher. So let's look at the new multitasking available in iPad OS 15. I'm just going to open up Safari and Safari actually the start page is a little bit different for you and I'll talk about that here in just a little bit. So as you can see at the top now we have three little buttons and these are three options for multitasking. You have your full screen, you have your second button is the split screen and then your third button is your slide over. If I hit the split screen button which is the one in the middle it slides off to the side and now it allows me to pick any app that I have available on my iPad. Before you had to have your toolbar available, so you had to you had to be like this and you had to kind of slide your finger up. You don't need to do that anymore. Now you just hit this middle button here, it slides off the screen and allows you to find another app to open up and then have the split screen. You also still have in the middle here, you have this button uh, that allows you to make a screen bigger or smaller. Um, so you can kind of adjust the width and the size uh, of what you want. Same, um, you have the button on both sides so I can get rid of it. I can now make it just a slide over if I want to instead of a split screen. Um, and then I can pull down uh, or pull up and throw it away. Or it hides off to the side here. You can see if I do my four finger swipe up to get my app switchers here, my slide over uh, is right on top. So I can easily, I have that here. And then again, I can get rid of it by sliding up from the bottom and sliding it away. So a nice easy way to do that, again, tap the middle, find another app that you wanna open up, and then you can adjust your window size or automatically change your window to easily be a slide over. The next new feature that comes to iPad OS, which was already on your iPhone, is the app library. If you delete an app on your iPhone, it asks you whether you wanted to delete the app completely or just delete it from your screens. Um, now that feature is available in iPad OS. So when you download an app, it automatically organizes it in your iPad or on your iPhone, and it puts it into different categories. And that's where you'll find those categories in the app library. The app library is available on the very last screen of your iPad. However, uh, Apple has done a very nice thing and they have put it down in your dock now as well. So you can see right down here at the bottom, this is my app library. So if I have an app on here and I tap and hold on it and I ask to delete the remove the app, it will say, hey, do you want to delete the app completely or do you just want to remove it from your home screen? And if I remove it from my home screen, I can just go down here to my app library and you can see that the app is still installed on my iPad. It just is not available. So it helps you organize yourself a little bit more and cleans up your home screens uh, a little bit easier as well. Okay, so I said we were gonna talk about Safari, so let's talk about Safari. So you can see now some of the new features in Safari it gives you the ability to group tabs together. 
and now you can install extensions into your Safari app like you would in other apps like Firefox or Chrome. So now that I'm in Safari, you can see I have this start page. So up at the top, you'll see um, as I start to populate Safari more, I will get more of the frequently visited. It gives me a little information about my privacy report within Safari, and then I can add things to my reading list uh, as I would like. So let's say I find an article on Edutopia, and I wanna add that article to my reading list. I go up here to the little box with the arrow, I tap on that, and then I can go down here, and I can easily um, add it to my home screen, I can add a bookmark, I can add it to my favorites, or again, I can add it to my reading list. And when you do that, first time you do that, it's going to ask you whether you want to automatically save reading list articles for offline reading, meaning if you don't have internet access, do you still want to be able to read those articles? And it will do that. And I'm going to say save automatically. So now it is in my reading list and ready to go. If I want to take these tabs that I have here and I want to group the tabs together, which is another new feature in Safari, I simply come up here to the right hand side, I click on this area where I have my bookmarks, my reading list, and my history, and then I have this little plus button right here. I have two options to create a uh, new tab group or I can take all the tabs that are currently there and create a new group from those items. So let's just try uh, a new empty tab group and I can name it what I want and it, I'll just call it reading. And now I have this reading list and I have a new tab group. You can see that the new tab group is up here at the top. I can go back to my six tabs over here. If I found another article on tech and learning, I can easily again go over here to the side and I can add it to my group. However, another feature that I can use is I can do a long press on the website and then it gives me the option I can copy it, I can move it to a tab group, I just choose the little drop down and here I can click on reading and then it will automatically add it to that reading tab group. The other option I have, if I do a long press on websites, I can actually arrange the tabs. So I can arrange them by title or I can arrange, them, arrange the tabs by website. So if I click that, it arranges, arranges them by title. If I do another long press, I can arrange them by tabs and it rearranges them again. Um, so you have a few options for arranging your tabs. I can also choose to close all the tabs in my group. One other place that I can arrange uh, and organize my tabs is if I go over here to the little grid in the far right hand corner. This brings up um, what you were traditionally used to seeing in the older Safari. Um, and then here I have my six tabs and I can choose this and I can choose what I want to do. So I can switch back and forth between the different tab groups um, and then I can also choose to create new tabs. So there are multiple ways for you to get to the different tabs and create new tabs in Safari. So the last update that I want to talk about with regard to Safari are the extensions. So if you go into your app store and you go down to apps here and you scroll all the way to the bottom of the screen, you'll get different collections. So you can see here that you have top categories and one of the top categories is Safari extensions. If you click on Safari extensions, you can go through here and you can download specific extensions for your Safari browser. They have their different categories even within the extensions to must have, to content blockers, top free, top paid. And then when you download the application, it will show you how to turn it on within Safari. To turn it on within Safari, you go into your settings app, go down to Safari, and then within Safari, you go down here and right here you have the extensions tab. You click on extensions and then you have to turn on or turn off or designate the specific items within that extension that you want turned on within your Safari browser. So widgets are now integrated more into iPad OS. They were huge in iOS 14 on your phone uh, and you had just a sliver of them available on your iPad, but now they've opened it up like they have on your phone. So when you are uh, on your iPad, you can see that I have widgets at the top and I can move those widgets around. If I just press and hold somewhere on my desktop, here you go. Uh, in the top left corner is my little plus and up here are where all of my widgets are. So I can go through and I can look at the different widgets that I wanna add. Maybe I wanna add a news widget. And then down here, I have these little dots at the bottom. These will show me the different ways that I can install the widget. So I can do just a small little block. I can do a little bit of a larger widget that will give me a description of the article. I can see multiple articles. Uh, again, different topics that I can look at as well. So I can do specific news articles or I can do topics. And if I want, then I just choose add widget and it will drop the widget in. And you can see here that I can easily move this widget around on my screen or on different screens that I want to. It doesn't just have to be the main screen of your iPad. One of my favorite new features in iPad OS 15 are the quick notes uh, because they, they work so easily. And it's nice to be able to work in different applications and add note to your notes app 
very quickly and easily. Let me show you how that works. So let's say I'm in an article uh, on my iPad in Safari and I wanna access my quick note. So the fastest way for me to do that is to pull from the bottom right corner of my screen, which is gonna be down here. And when I do that, I'm going to quickly access a quick note. And what it does is it sees the URL of the article I'm reading. And yes, I, I wanna add that article. So I just simply click add link and that will it will drop that in. Now I have access to many, many other features within my notepad to take notes while I'm reading the article. So I can start to type. I have my little pen tool down here at the bottom so I can start to write or draw on here if I want to. So I have my little Logitech crayon here. I'm just going to click on the little pencil in the bottom right corner and I can write the word pencil and I can take notes right in here with my handwriting. I have the handwriting pen. I can easily just do a handwriting and it will convert it to text. So I have that feature available for me very, very quickly and easily with uh, either the Apple Pencil or the uh, Logitech Crayon. If I click on the three dots here, the four dot grid at the top, it automatically takes me out to my notes app so I can find that note easily in my notes app. Um, the little three dots in the circle, I can easily share this quick note out to people and I can click on the little notepad tool there and start a new quick note right from within this document. Again, just pull right up from the right hand corner. When I'm done, I can click done and I can move about this article and anytime that I want to do stuff, I just add the quick article. Another cool feature is once I start to highlight something within the article, my quick note automatically pops up in the right hand corner and it's like, hey, I see that you're highlighting something. Would you like to add it to your quick note? And then here it is right here, add to quick note, boom. Now it's automatically in my quick note and it's added right there as part of the link. So I have this link. I have a quote right in here from the article uh, and everything is labeled and stuck together and easily found for me uh, when I need to share that out or when I need to access it back again. When I'm done creating my quick note, if I want to go back and find it later on, I just find my notes app, which is right here, open that, and then they are automatically categorized under quick notes. So uh, over here are my little uh, menu bar. I can click on this and then you'll see here that quick notes is one. I only have one quick note in my notes folder, um, but anytime I create a quick note moving forward, that number will go up and it's easy for me to find all of my quick notes right here. I know I said quick notes was probably my favorite new feature in iPad OS 15, but the live text in photos is uh, almost a game changer for anybody using their device, especially students, I think, to, because if a teacher has notes up on the board or they've written something on the board or they, they, they have a presentation up on the board, students can simply hover over or take a picture, scan the text, and get it to into another document like a Google Doc or their Notes app or GoodNotes, whatever note-taking feature that they're using. So a couple of videos that I have found on TikTok that demonstrate this much better than I could, so I wanna share those with you. And before I talk about specifically the live photos, I found this from Frank McShan. And what this does is this allows you to copy multiple images from, your, uh, from Safari and drop those easily into your Photos app. So go ahead and watch Frank Machine's video. Uh, link is in the newsletter down here, right next to live text and photos. You can see my little foam finger. That is, uh, it, it's amazing. Um, the next video that I found here demonstrates how to actually use the live text in photo feature. So all you have to do is bring up your camera and you don't actually, actually have to take a picture. All you have to do is hover over the image uh, or the sign or whatever. You, so you can see that there's uh, text on here. You hit the live tile in the bottom right corner and it will automatically recognize the text. And so when you see it in there, it you have the little brackets around it, you get it there. Um, and then when the brackets come up, you can copy that and paste it into whatever you need to paste it into, whatever notes that you're trying to take. You can also use it for phone numbers. So you can find a phone number text and call directly uh, through your phone app. And you can use it to create directions in uh, Apple Maps. So if you have an address on a business card or on a sign or something and you want to get directions to that location, you can do the same thing, just hover over. Here's a little screenshot of um, what happens when it recognizes a phone number. You get all of these options to send a message, FaceTime, add to contacts, or simply call the number. So you can see here, the live text in photos, new features, unlock text, make a call, send an email, get directions, recognize photos, and get more info simply from the text that is on the screen. I think it's gonna be uh, amazing and I'm really excited to dive into this feature specifically as I'm moving forward. So another update is to FaceTime and FaceTime has introduced SharePlay. So you can watch, listen, and share your screen all within FaceTime, it's awesome. In portrait mode, you can blur your background so you can see that the background for me is blurred, I'm not using FaceTime, but you're gonna get the same uh, system set up where your background is blurred and 
You also have mic mode and it will minimize the background noise um, when you are trying to talk to somebody using FaceTime. So if you're out in public, this is gonna be kind of a game changer for that in that respect. So you can see here CNN underscored has this little short video that shows you how to change the mic mode, how to blur your background, so you can watch this video and see all of those new features in FaceTime. Next, we've got the new updates to messages. So messages that are shared with you creates a folder of information in Safari, in news, in photos. So if people are sharing links with you or sharing multiple pictures, they are going to show up as a, a set of pictures and they are going to go into your photos app uh, under a new folder called shared with you. Here's a great video by Brandon Butch that outlines some of the new updates to the messages app and how you receive pictures. Um, and what that looks like. I think it's a lot cleaner and a lot nicer when people send you multiple pictures. And you can find that video linked here at the bottom of the newsletter uh, in the little purple next to the messages information. Finally, the last update that I wanna talk about with regard to iPad OS is the focus um, setting. It's kind of like do not disturb, but now they've made do not disturb on steroids. So when you are in iPad OS or your phone and you pull down from the control center, which is up here in the top right corner, you have this little focus button. And when you tap on focus, the top option is do not disturb, but then you can set all of these different focuses for the day. So you can have them when you're driving, you can have them at certain parts of the day when you wanna be more focused and, and with less distraction. And so you can click on the like do not disturb now it's going to be like a normal do not disturb i'm not going to receive any messages or any anything that's going to disrupt my day i have sleep again that's on i have the little three dots and then i can click on the settings of my uh, focus for sleep and this will tell me exactly what's going to happen when i am in sleep focus if i go back in focus now i can go in here and up in the top right corner is my little plus and I can add a new type of focus. So I, maybe I'm gaming or maybe I'm trying to work out or I wanna create a custom focus. So I click on that, I name my focus, give it a little um, icon and I'm just gonna call it time. And then I can say what sort of notifications I want to allow, who I want to allow calls from. Maybe I, I don't wanna allow any any apps that I wanna allow notifications through, I can click on those, I can make them time sensitive. So there's a lot of different ways for you to customize the specific focus that you want to design and set up and have easy access to when you're on the fly. And as you can see at the top now, right up here next to my battery, you can see that I am in sleep focus because I have the little bed icon right up here. So it tells me on my device exactly what sort of focus that I'm in. To find the focus, in your settings, you go to settings, and then right down here, right above screen time, are your little uh, focus options and for you to create a new focus. Little overwhelming, all of the new features that are available in iPad OS 15 and iOS 15. I encourage you to just take some time, uh, find the features and the updates that maybe interest you most and will work best for how you use the iPad or your phone. Uh, and then just spend some time with them because iPad OS 15 and iOS 15 are going to be out for the next year with small little tinkerings throughout the year. But this is going to be it for the year. So you have plenty of time to kind of get used to the new features available on your Apple device. That's it for this episode of the Ed Newsstand podcast. I really appreciate you listening to the podcast or watching the video version on YouTube because I know your time is valuable. Please check out all the resources in this week's newsletter all about the new updates to Apple's iOS. Also, thank you to at Frank McShan, Stylus Avs, CNN underscore, and Brandon Butch on TikTok for their great tutorials about iOS 15. For more EdTech resources, you can follow me on social media. You can find me on Twitter at Reynolds Troy and on Instagram and TikTok at Ed Newsstand. If you're listening on any podcast platform and would like to hear more, please like and subscribe to receive updates and have any new episode automatically downloaded for you. You can also revisit my previous episodes on any major podcasting platform like Spotify, Anchor.fm, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, or Google Podcasts. You can also check out the video version of my podcast over on my YouTube channel and check out any of the other video resources I have available. If you'd like to download my app to have my podcast and newsletters right on your smart device, please check it out at ednewstand.glideapp.io and save it to your home screen. If you don't want the app but would like to check out my resources, please visit my website at ednewstand.weebly.com. This is Troy Reynolds, and this is the Ed Newstand Podcast, hoping you were able to take away at least one idea for your classroom. Please be safe. Until next time.